I do not entertain any situation where I realize that I can slip up because believe me, I still have a fallen nature just as you do and I know myself well enough. I know how my mind plays tricks on me. I know when the devil's speaking to me. I know when he's lying to me. I know when he's trying to tempt me. You guys need to understand that even though we are born again as saints under Christ, we still have a fallen fleshy nature and Satan is a liar and he is coming to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video on the David Hammond YouTube channel. Let's get it going, guys. Developing the world, or you as men, through Christ. That's, I mean, that's the Christ developed tagline. This is the David Hammond channel, so I guess I don't need to say that. But anyways, guys, with that said, this channel, yes, is dedicated towards growing you guys closer to Christ, becoming more masculine as men, and enhancing the world the best we can through that. So with that said, guys, in today's video, I titled it, or believe I titled it, Why You as Men Should Avoid Women Completely. Yes, I have definitely made videos on this before, but I'm going to continue to do so and hit this one with a new 2.0 biblical angle. So guys, with that said, in my last video, which I will link up here, if I remember, because I always say that and then I just don't do it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm usually in a rush when I edit these because I work full-time labor. It's like 1230 at night. That's why I'm drinking coffee this late balancing like two and a half jobs, but that's okay, we endure for the kingdom. Uh, in my last video, guys, I titled it, or I spoke of um, uh, being celibate and how that's a, a very biblical path that the vast majority of men, especially in these end days, may take, you know? I just don't want you guys to rush into having kids in a family because it's like what you're supposed to do as a Christian and then like the world ends in two years and you could have saved, you know, X amount of souls, but now you can't because you were too busy, which I'm not saying kids are bad, you know, that's such an amazing thing, but um, we need more warriors for Christ to step on the current corruption and save souls right now, I believe personally. Um, so this is kind of like a part two, guys. This is speaking about avoiding women completely. And um, this is kind of the answer I give to a lot of you guys who ask me, you know, David, um, whether that's through DMs or comments, and this is not like bragging or anything, guys, but they'll say, David, you know, you've changed so much in such little time. You know, you've started street preaching or learning the word or your boldness, your wisdom, your ideas. Like, where is this all coming from? How come you're like evolving so quickly? And even though maybe the views and the likes aren't, you know, crazy or anything like that, they can see it internally. Like, what's going on? Even people close to me, they're like, man, I spoke to you like two months ago. Like, you're like, I got an entire different person now. First and foremost, I want to give all glory to Christ, the Holy Spirit, guys. That is Matthew 6, 44, I believe, that the Holy Spirit, I could be wrong, yeah, the Holy Spirit leads us to, no, 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 that's a different verse, yes. I'm thinking of John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit leads us to all truths and it gives us a remembrance of everything Christ has taught us. So that is A1, number one, guys. Not, you know, this is not me developing myself and this is really why I changed the, 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 the brand now, the street preaching ministry, instead of self-developed to Christ-developed, becoming developed through Christ. That is the Holy Spirit, guys, and it will sanctify you and like I said in that verse, give you a remembrance of everything Christ has taught you. So that's number one. But number two, guys, you know, there is a second part, and that will be our own free will. And I was going to make a, a story on this, you know, why the majority of Christians, maybe I'll make a video on this, aren't on fire. You know, this is something I'm really noticing in these end days. There's a lot of Christians who, you know, first and foremost, don't have what I told you, the Holy Spirit, um, which is, again, we're not saying we're better. It's just that they just don't have it. And they're wondering, you know, um, you know, how do I gain it? Or B, let's say they do have it, and they're just very disobedient, I guess, like they're just not on fire, which I personally believe they just don't have it. Because if you have the Holy Spirit in you, this is, yes, 1 John 3, 9, it states that once you are uh, born of God, you have the seed of God. You cannot continue to remain living in sin, right? You have the seed of God within you. So it's, it, it's literally impossible, guys. Like, again, that doesn't mean we're not going to fall short. Of course, yes, we will fall short. You know, I'll get wrathful sometimes at work and I'll, I'll let off an F-bomb when I, when I shouldn't, you know, I swear. But immediately, guys, I get convicted. I, I feel this is not right. This is not correct. And I, I don't, like, I don't, you know, like willfully think like, ah, you know, yeah, let me keep saying it. No, it's not a good thing, okay? Uh, that's what it means to, to, to live in sin, to keep on sinning willfully is to know, let's say fornication is a sin and you, you like literally think, okay, well on Friday, I'm gonna call this girl and I know God doesn't want me to do it, but who, like, no, no, no. That's bad, okay? It's also Hebrews 12, eight to six, right? Getting chastened by God, that's a different video. Uh, so in this video, guys, speaking about um, the free will part, right? Which, which will be your part. And yes, why most Christians, um, you know, just aren't on fire. There's a number of reasons, guys. Um, one of them really is just you're being disobedient, you know, but I would say the biggest one, at least the one that I wanna tackle in today's video, is you guys need to create a vacuum for yourself. You need to create monk mode. You need to create space 
Think of it like this. I was on a client call the other day. When Christ, the Holy Spirit, right, is, is growing within you, it's leading you to all truths. It is sanctifying you guys, right? Once you are born again, it's a very real thing. That is the part that is not of us, right? I, I can't take credit for that. But what we are obligated to do as, as now warriors of Christ, as, 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 as saints in the eyes of God, is we need to give that space to happen, right? Think of like a plant. You know, the plant will naturally grow by itself, meaning like the roots, you know, the photosynthesis, all that stuff just happens. I, I, I'm not the plant, but what I am doing is I'm giving that plant what it needs. Do you understand? I'm giving it the pot. I'm giving it good soil. I'm watering it, right, every few days. I'm positioning it next to sunlight. These are things that I can control. And these are things that you and I are obligated to do as now saints, which really should be natural and organic. But again, I, maybe just Christians just don't do this. I don't know. This To me, it kind of, it just happened naturally. So maybe it is not of my own works, to be honest. But uh, where I'm kind of going with it, guys, to simplify it is you need to create space. You need to avoid women. I said that kind of funny. Avoid. You need to avoid anything for the time being that will temporarily snatch that seed. I love, I love how I use the analogy of a plant because that's exactly what Satan does. I'll put up the verse here. Satan only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. There's a parable, and I believe I want to say Matthew, uh, what is it, chapter 13 or 6? I could be wrong, but it's essentially like an entire chapter, the first like at least chunk of the chapter, which speaks of the parable of the sower and the seeds, right? I'm sure you guys are aware of this, where essentially there is a, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a man who's planting seeds, right? You can kind of think of these seeds as um, individuals who are beginning to find Christ. And now some of these seeds, right, they, they, they land on brick. Let's say he has a, like 10 seeds and he just scatters them. He just throws them. Now, some of these seeds are going to land on brick, right? Now, what's going to happen? The birds are going to come. They're going to snatch them up you were staying in situations where you were tempted, snatched. Now, some of the seeds are going to land on soil. Okay, good soil, but, you know, they didn't actually dig their roots deep. Maybe the sun didn't come or the rain didn't come or they got, they got parched up. Okay, well, maybe you weren't in situations where you were completely tempted all the time, but you still kept that one contact. You still were kind of entertaining with your ex. Snatched, didn't grow. And then there's the seed that lands on good soil and it gets nurtured. The rain comes, the sun comes, it's able to take root. You let go of all distractions from these women. You moved gyms purposefully to a private gym where you train by yourself. Maybe one other guy who's, who's a man, who's a 40-year-old man. Um, but there are no women here. There are no distractions here. You maybe switch jobs. You unfollowed all those women. You took the steps needed to allow that seed to take root. Amen, hallelujah. That is exactly what the point of this video is. You need to avoid women completely. You need to take a season of monk mode, which the majority of men cannot do. They just don't do this. I mean, you can do this, but they choose not to do this. Yes, even Christian men. I'll be brutally honest, guys. Most Christian men are, are really no different than the average man. You know, I'm, I, as I'm f furthering my walk with Christ, I'm realizing that these are still like effeminate, simpy, addicted men to women. They're really no different, but they just go to church. They just have this like veil of like Christianity. They're no different. They're still the natural man. Unless you are born again, that's John 3.3. 3, um, you're the natural man. There's no question about it. You're just a religious kind of NPC guy. I'm not trying to be mean. There's nothing wrong, guys, of, you know, I'll be brutally honest, you know, yeah, I don't even, don't even talk to women, guys. Like, I go to work, right? Maybe you're at a job where, like, there are some women. And, um, but the thing is, guys, with most jobs, you don't need to talk to them. I'm just going to be brutally honest with you guys. You know, I'm at a job. I work labor. There are still women, though. There's maybe, like, five or six of them. Some are kind of pretty. Some are, you know, uh, you know <laughs> whatever. But, like, and I'll notice a lot of men will, like, go out of their way at, like, lunchtime or break time to, like, always kind of, like, engage in conversations. You know what I do? Nothing. El Zippo. Nothing. Nada. I do not entertain any situation where I realize that I can slip up because believe me, I still have a fallen nature just as you do. And I know myself well enough. I know how my mind plays tricks on me. I know when the devil's speaking to me. I know when he's lying to me. I know when he's trying to tempt me. You guys need to understand that even though we are born again as saints under Christ, we still have a fallen fleshy nature. And Satan is a liar. And he is coming to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. 
You need to be proactive with this stuff, man. Okay, guys, and I say this to all of you with anything you're struggling with, lust, fornication, masturbation, drinking alcohol, smoking weed. What do you need to cut out of your life that you're not doing yet because you're too afraid? Are you really born again? Because if you are truly born again, right? This is Hebrews 12, 6 to 8. When you do fall short, God will chasten you. God chastens those, which means to discipline those that he loves, right? If you are a child of God, he's going to chasten you. But if you're not, you know what the verses after say? If you don't get chastened, you're a bastard, meaning you were never one of his sons. You were never born again. That's Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you right? It is only those who do the will of my Father. And what is the will? Believing on the Son, Jesus Christ. Truly being born again. Because you can't truly believe in Christ and not be born again. That's a fake belief, right? That's what they say in James. You know, even, even demons believe. Even the devil believes. Yeah, but do you have a, 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 a saving faith, right? How do we know that you're born again? There are fruits, guys. You have a change of heart. You have a renewed spirit. As in Ezekiel, God removes your heart of stone, gives you a heart of flesh and a spirit that keeps you in Christ's uh, commandments or God's commandments and statutes. Everything changes, right? But we need to be obedient to the word, guys. And again, I'm not promoting a works-based salvation, but you know, I'll be brutally honest with you guys. The further I go down this path, the more I'm slowly agreeing with more works-based salvationist uh, channels. And I don't mean Catholics or anything like that. No, I don't mean like, oh, I have to do a rosary. No, but I mean, you need to be obedient, guys. Like, like are you actually like walking this path? Or are you just, you said a one prayer, you know, this is it, you know, I'm saved. And then you continue to live in your degenerate sin, right? Now, I'm under the conviction you were just never born again. So I am a yes. I'm under the conviction of a once saved, always saved. That is, that is very biblical. That's where I you know, personally believe. I used to be works-based salvation where you could lose your salvation. You had, to, you, had to, you had to work for it. I don't believe that, guys. Once you are truly born again, you are born again, right? That's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. We are saved through grace by faith, not of our works. But the reality is, guys, the vast majority of Christians and you guys are not born again. And if you are born again, right, like that seed, you're not allowing it to fully flourish into its maximum potential. That's really what it is. And I think this is uh, the case for a lot of you guys. It's either one, the vast majority of Christians and people are just not born again to begin with. But then two, I do believe there are a subsect of Christians who are born again, but they're, it's, it's almost like you have like a fire, right? With a candle or, or a fire, just like a fireplace, right? You light a fire in the forest, but you're like, you're, you're suffocating it, right? You know, as the fire is trying to, it needs oxygen, right? Fires need oxygen, guys. That's why you fan a flame, right? As it needs oxygen, you are literally like, like putting a blanket over it. Guys, if you want to know how to like kill a fire, you, you, you suffocate it. If you guys have a candle, I'm sure you're aware of this. I'm not a fire expert, but you have a candle. You don't even need to blow in it. That's why they have a lid. There's a reason why every candle comes with a lid, guys. Because what are you supposed to, the real way you're supposed to put it is you put the lid on it. You give it three seconds. It suffocates, it needs oxygen. And a lot of you guys are not providing your fire, the Holy Spirit with oxygen. Or if you are, it's just like this like half-assed oxygen. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm obedient here and there. I kind of like follow the commandments here, but then I don't. The reason Christ in the New Testament, guys, I believe why he makes it so clear, this is John 14, 15. Uh, if you love me, he says, you will keep my commandments. I believe, and this is also, uh, yes, what was this? I want to say 1 John 3, 9, I believe this is. If uh, a man says that he knows God, he knows Christ, but does not keep his commandments, he is a liar, the truth is not in him. That's terrifying. I believe the vast majority of reasons why it's, it's so promoted that you must keep the commandments is not because this is necessarily a works-based salvation, but it's because if you are truly born again and obedient and a warrior for Christ, you are, you are, you are, you're truly just born again. You will by default keep the commandments. It's not arduous, guys. I don't, you know, be celibate till marriage or make these videos and change the brand and lose all this money and willfully do it and now go work labor till 12 o'clock. Um, you know, I don't do this because like, oh, you know, I have to. It's like, no, 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 I have the spirit of God in me. Or, or did, I, did I make that verse wrong? You know what 1 John 3, 9 is? Actually, yes, I think I got the verse wrong. That is, sorry, yes, let me go back. I probably already put it up on screen. I had a feeling that it was wrong. That is 1 John 2, 4, I believe. I believe, yes, the one that I said before. 1 John 3, 9, I believe, is that um, a man cannot keep on going willfully sinning. I believe that's what I said, uh, having the seed of God. And guys, these are terrifying verses. And this is what a lot of Christians don't speak of. 
and it's really scary. And as I'm learning the word more and more, I'm realizing how serious it is in keeping the commandments. I'm realizing how serious it is that very few Christians are truly born again, and the vast majority of Christians will go to hell. The vast majority of people will go to hell. But I'm speaking of like Christians in general. You guys need, you, like, you, you really got to grow up, man. You really got to take this walk serious. I really hope this, this video is convicting you guys. You know, maybe I'll be a pastor when I'm older. I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of you guys who are claiming to be Christian. I'm saying this to people close in my life who are claiming to know God, to claiming to be on the straight and narrow, but you're not. You're not. If, 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 if you took out Christian creator from your bio on Instagram, you took out that Bible verse, no one would know you're Christian. No one. That should terrify you. And again, this is not a works-based salvation. I'm not saying you have to do this uh, or you can't do this and this outweighs. The, no, no, this is not Islam, guys. I'm not saying we're saved by our works. No, but if you are truly abiding in Christ, you will produce these fruits, right? That's John, uh, that's John chapter five. I want to say uh, 15, 15, John 15, 15, four and five. He speaks about that. Are you really abiding in Christ? Because if you are, it'll be evident. I don't think a lot of you are, though. And that should terrify you. You should know right now with a shed of doubt, are you going to heaven if you die? If you died right now, where would you go? And if you're not abiding in Christ, you're going to hell. This should really terrify you guys. Paul tells us to examine ourselves. Examine yourself. Are you truly in the faith? I believe he says that in, in Corinthians. I believe. I could be wrong. So that's really it, guys. And one of the prerequisites, one of the ways in which you will allow this plant, this seed to flourish is by avoiding women. I mean, it's a ton of things, guys. I say women, but it's really, it's a ton of things, right? Drinking, partying, alcohol, whatever it is, whatever your old lifestyle you were struggling with, you gotta, you gotta make these changes, man, right? Because you can't serve two masters for you'll either love the one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other. So that is that, guys. It's time to be more obedient and real followers of Christ, not just fake Instagram Christians who don't even live this life. Uh, I say this with love, guys. I don't say this because I'm any better than you. Absolutely not. I give all glory to Christ. This is what allows me to stay in these statutes. This is not of my own works. I'm like a, a robot, and he's kind of doing it, but I'm choosing, or at least I believe so, because we do have free will, uh, to still do this when he tells me to do something, right? And you got to make sure you guys are too. So thank you guys. Have an amazing day. I really hope this video edified you and was able to uh, guide you guys and give you some clarity and direction. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And I'll finish the video here with the one final plug. Guys, if you're interested, there is always one-on-one -on -one coaching where I can speak to you men deeper on a more personal level at everything of what we talked about in today's video. Being a warrior for Christ, a biblical masculine man, improving every area of your life physically, mentally, emotionally, and in relationships. That is that, guys. Spots are below. I love speaking with you. Thank you. Have an amazing day. I will catch you guys next video. Till then, much love. Peace.